What would happen if you never had sex again? <laughs> what if the last time you made love to your partner was the last time it would ever happen? And if you haven't had sex yet, what if that opportunity was taken away from you? What would happen? It turns out, probably not much. <laughs> if you're a biological female, you might notice an accelerated loss of fat around your pubis. If you're a biological male, you probably won't notice the decreased motility of your sperm over time. Now, of course, as a species, not having sex is incredibly problematic. But as an individual, we can make this decision, and there are many advantages associated with it. In a survey we conducted of asexuals, they described a number of advantages, the most common being loss of romantic entanglements, <laughs> more free time, <laughs> and fewer health risks. So, most adults still choose to have sex. Why? In my studies at eight years at the Kinsey Institute for Research in Sex, Gender, and Reproduction, while I was a graduate student at Indiana University in the clinical science program, while I learned about neuroscience and statistics, I also learned about congressional defunding of federal grants, <laughs> bomb threats, sexist attacks on female scientists, and that there are a whole lot of people out there that don't want us to know the answer to this and other sexuality questions. So, the USA is behind other countries in this area, but sexual psychophysiology continues to persevere and try to answer this and other questions. We ask anyway. So, why do people have sex? Well, we know why they don't have sex. They definitely don't have sex to reproduce. That is <laughs> the <laughs> lowest. <laughs> the least cited reason by men and women in first-time and long-term partnerships. When asked directly, people cite a number of reasons for engaging in sex. They do it to reward their mate for good behavior, <laughs> to feel closer to their partner, to attract a new partner out of boredom, to play, and to de-stress. But overwhelmingly, the most common reason cited that people engage in sex is for pleasure. <laughs> but what is pleasurable about sex, exactly? <laughs> well, it's the orgasm, of course, right? It's that goofy face we make at the end. <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> Is that the only thing it could be? What's the evidence for that? So an orgasm is defined physiologically as 8 to 12 contractions that occur in the vaginal and anal sphincter, starting 0.8 seconds apart and increasing in latency to their termination. We have therapies. <laughs> we have therapies that can increase the consistency with which someone experiences an orgasm with intercourse. So if, as with most women, they experience orgasm about 65% of occasions, these therapies can increase it to closer to 100%. And when you do that, women report higher sexual desire over time. This appears consistent with the idea that orgasm is reinforcing sexual behavior. Along those same lines, we have data showing that men orgasm extremely consistently with almost every intercourse episode, <laughs> including <laughs> with new partners, long-term partners, in between partners. <laughs> <laughs> Women vary quite a lot more. Uh, they tend to be much less consistent, even with long-term partners. And in worldwide surveys of sex drive, we consistently see that women report lower drive. So this also kind of seems consistent with that idea that orgasm is reinforcing sex for pleasure. However, there's a piece of that puzzle that doesn't fit very well. Men vary tremendously in their level of sexual desire, too. 
So despite having an orgasm, almost every time they engage in intercourse, we can see in these scans that men who've been diagnosed with hypoactive sexual desire disorder, or low libido, actually are responding differently in their brains to sexual cues. If not orgasm, then what? A number of labs have scanned the brain using functional magnetic resonance imaging or positron emission tomography during orgasm. But the limitations of those technologies are that they can't see things happening quickly in time. And usually, you just get one shot. <laughs> <laughs> Electroencephalography can. So, we brought men and women into our lab and we recorded electroencephalography, or EEG, while we brought them to orgasm using a computer-automated genital vibrator. <laughs> and we noticed something remarkable in part of their brain response. The part we are particularly interested in is called the alpha response. And the alpha component of the EEG is commonly thought to index a cortical idling or a relaxed wakefulness. In this spectrogram, you see green spikes across the bottom. These show the vibrator turning on and off and on and off. We like to tease them a little. <laughs> the, last, <laughs> the last two markers are the person indicating the start of their orgasm and then the end of their orgasm. The bright components on the spectrogram show greater power in the particular frequency shown on the y-axis. So what you might notice is these bright components are happening as the vibrator stimulation gets longer and longer and just before orgasm, but not at orgasm. And we've seen this over and over again. What might that mean? It could mean that what's actually reinforcing about sexual behavior is those very high arousal states, and that orgasm has the rather banal function of just helping decongest the genital area at the termination of sex. And if that's true, what does that mean? It could mean that if the end of a sexual encounter, your partner has not had an orgasm, and they say, no, really, I'm fine, they mean it. They've already gotten the benefit, and you should leave them alone. <laughs> 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 All of the reward really may come from those high arousal states. It also could have broader implications for non-sexual health behaviors. If we can provoke high sexual arousal in this relaxed, wakeful state, what do we need meditation for? Are there medications we could replace using that type of approach? Could we improve pain tolerance just with sexual arousal? So, we know that people don't have sex for reproduction. They may not have sex for orgasm either. There are some people who would not like us to ask these questions, but we're going to ask anyway. Thank you.